I've never met anyone like Adam. He is my best friend, my teammate. He is the best person I've ever met. And I know everyone says that, but he will give a stranger the shirt off his back. You know, I think she's the best person in the world. I think you know, she lights up every room she's in. I know like I'm marrying the best person in the world, but he's also making me such a better person every single day. She, she always just makes me smile. She's silly, she's fun. You know, we talk and, and have fantastic conversation, whether it's, you know, joking around or getting serious. She's always pushed me to be a better person. And I think that's, and, and she, she does that to others as well. She always wants the best for people. She's just so caring and loving. And uh, I think she's gonna make a phenomenal wife and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with her. We met for the first time at a restaurant. Yes. But I don't remember that. And I was sober. But <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't I, memorable. I, that night I thought she was very loud and annoying. <laughs> I didn't remember her much either. <laughs> Thanks to be rude. But when we actually met in a memorable fashion, we were at a UK basketball game. He was there with the mutual friend that I went to dinner with, and they were wearing ref shirts in the student section. And I was with a friend, it was my second UK basketball game, and it was my senior year. And Peter waved me down and was like, come sit behind us. And I came over and was like, why are you in ref shirts? And we talked kind of on and off throughout the game, which for Adam is quite rare because he's screaming constantly and I had no idea what was going on. So I think the actual first conversation we had was the lie where you said you knew the basketball player you were shouting at and that you played on his little league at church and his dad was your church basketball coach and none of that was true. No. <laughs> but it did make us talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Transitioned into starting to hang out more um, going out with, with groups of friends and stuff. Um, I think we, we, we met again at Peter's birthday party about two weeks after the basketball game. Yes, we were bowling and at the basketball game we talked about karaoke because both of us liked karaoke. And there was karaoke on Thursday nights. His birthday was on a Thursday. And Adam said as we were wrapping up bowling at his party, he was like, why don't we go to karaoke? And I said, no, because yeah. it was late. <laughs> and so we didn't do that. Um, but then probably a week later, um, we, we, we texted about doing karaoke again. And me and my roommate, Jason, wanted to go. And Peter was hanging out with us. And we said, would you go with us? And he agreed. He originally agreed. And he actually said, he said, I'll go if you guys guess this random card I pull out of a deck. And Jason and I talked about it and we guessed the seven of hearts and it was indeed the seven of hearts. And I think if Peter wasn't going, I don't know if we would have gone over. No. And so Peter said he was gonna go because of that. And so we went over and then Peter left us at her door. <laughs> and, and I was waiting because Peter had texted he would go and I wasn't going to go to karaoke with this random guy I had met twice that weirded me out. And so I was like, oh, but we're going as a group. I know Peter. We're in the business college together. And all of a sudden these two guys knocked on the door and I knew they were coming. No Peter. And so I was like, I have two random guys in my apartment. This doesn't seem good. But it was great. We loved it. <laughs> yeah, we ended, up, we ended up going to karaoke. We had a, a great night. Uh, Saying 1985 sang together. 1985 together. And uh, we went and snuck into one of the towers on campus and went to use the secret elevator code to go to the top. Um, and so that was a lot of fun. And um, I think from there, uh, we, we were just friends. For yeah, we were, we were just friends for probably two months. And then, and then we kissed. We kissed. And then we went on a date. Yes. <laughs> and then we finally went on a date after spending like 72 hours straight together. 
Yes. <laughs> we were friends, but we would get flirty, I would say. Yeah. We were both single. We both liked each other. The other guy that came to our house, Jason, I had told Jason, I really like Adam. And he had said, Adam doesn't really like you. And that... <laughs> Which was a lie, because I had told them the first night that we went out, I liked her, but... And he said, so he's like, you know, he kind of thinks he likes you, he's not sure. He was a really weird wingman. <laughs> and so I kind of talked to Jason throughout, and every time we went out, we would just end up just us talking and hanging out together, even in a big group. We would agree on a bunch of stuff. I think I feel bad for the group because we'd always grow up with like a group of four or a group of six and it would just end up being like us standing in a corner hanging out. And so I think we knew the other person liked each other. Yeah, I think it was <laughs> it was a lot of like, does does the other person like, I think we both had doubts on like how, yeah. how real it was. And I was graduating. Yeah, so that and I think, I think that added complications as well. But um, yeah, just one night there was, she likes to say there's peer pressure. I was planning on kissing her, but... Um, Friends encouraged it heavily. It was uh, walking between bars. Uh, we ended up we ended up getting ahead of the group. And I don't know, we started talking, waiting up for them. And I just went in for it. <laughs> and it worked out. It worked out. She didn't turn me down. <laughs> So I said I love you first, and I think it was after a night out, we were talking and he went to talk to a different group and hang out and he didn't come back for a while. And I was like, this is very odd. And I was in town to visit him because we were doing long distance and we were sitting there talking and I was like, I just don't like commitment and I don't like emotions. And I was getting very overwhelmed. And he was like, what is going on? And I was like, you don't feel the way I feel. I don't want to talk about this anymore. And I was like, we should break up. And he was like, no, let's talk about it. And I was like, I love you. And then he said it back. And then we didn't talk about it for days. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and then I think it was a text. And I think it was like, I said, I meant what I said the other night. And you were like, I did too. And then it was all okay. <laughs> I knew, looking back, I knew I loved Adam after a trip we did where I was in Nashville and he was in Louisville. So in the middle is Mammoth Cave, Dinosaur World, and... Kentucky Down Under. Kentucky Down Under, where you can pet kangaroos. <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> And we did that, and I'm, I stayed in a motel, and that was intimidating and terrifying. Um, and then we, actually, I went to Lexington to wait for him to finish his job. He worked at a baseball stadium, and I was, like, sitting there waiting, and I was like, this is a lot to do for a summer fling. And I was like, I don't know if this is a summer fling. I think, I think this could be more. And I don't think I realized that it was the feeling of love until we broke up and how hard it was just not to talk to you every day. Because somewhere in that short three months, you had become my best friend. And not having that, I was like, oh, I love him. And that was bad time. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I realized is our first summer dating, doing the long distance, um, you know, finding myself wanting to call her and then not wanting to stop talking to her, I think was really when I started to realize it. And I mean, the conversation was just so easy and, and I, I loved it every time. And I just, I think, that, I think that's when I realized that I loved her was, was through those uh, long distance phone calls. I mean, that would last hours on end. We've always put the other person first. And he's always put me first and being willing to do long distance. He never said, hey, this isn't gonna work or you need to kind of stop this. And even when I was pursuing different jobs, he would never restricted me. And even throughout, I would just say, that's something really unique because when I said I need to move for work, he didn't even hesitate. He said, I will be there, whatever we need to do to make that work. And when I said, I wanna move home, he said, great. You do that and I will be here for however we need to do that. And I just think 
for me, that was very unique. I've never had anyone be that flexible throughout my life. <laughs> I think a part of our relationship that's very unique, um, especially in this day and age, is we keep things pretty uh, private, and I think that's nice. And um, you know, it's the, the rest of the world doesn't fully know our love and how much we we love each other, but. Um, I really enjoy that aspect of it. It was just, it's like our, our special little thing. I think it's important that we're getting married. Um, I think kind of in a similar thing to, you know, what makes our relationship so special is having it so private. I think we want to let everyone else know, um, you know, this is very real. We, we do love each other <laughs> that much. Um, it's not just, uh, you know, something that we, we just do out of convenience or anything. Um, I, I think it is just letting everyone else know. I think we've always known um, that, that it was going to be each other for forever. Um, and I think it's just putting that commitment and letting everyone else know. <laughs> I think that's fair. <laughs> um, you know, I, I did not want to get married. That was never on my plan of life and my grandma finally said to me at one point because she was asking and she was just trying to understand our relationship and I said he is my person he is my partner um god <laughs> um and there's just no day or world where we wouldn't be together and she was like you know <laughs> that's marriage and I was like huh that's nice <laughs> And I think just putting it that simply of knowing there's a way to describe and affirm to him that that's how I feel, because I'm not great at it. And I just know he's my person day in and day out that I think marriage is like the easiest question I've ever been asked. I was not expecting for him to propose. Um, I thought we had come to an agreement that we were just gonna be life partners. And I was completely good with that. That felt nice. We had kind of talked about, you know, what marriage might look like um, in the summer before uh, the proposal happened. And I started looking for a ring in that summer. And I think I made the order in August and it showed up in September. Um, and I, I thought about how I was gonna do it and I had lots of different ideas and I just wasn't sure. I knew I wanted to do it before the new year, um, but I just wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do it. Um, and I, I'm a little bit of an overthinker and I definitely overthought it. And for months he had let it slip that he got a gift of some sort. And I am the better gift giver in the relationship. And so I got really stressed out because I hadn't picked out his Christmas gift yet and he had put limits on it and I was getting worried and so I kept asking, what is this gift, what is this gift? I probably asked him every week from the time I found out and I think I found out in September and I think it was just really bothering him because he could see how stressed out I was. I was making lists of gift ideas and throwing them away because I had no idea what it could be. Thanksgiving time, uh, the week of Thanksgiving, Paige got sick with the flu, and on Thanksgiving Day, we just spent it ourselves. And um, I think something about that, of just being with each other on you know, that holiday um, and, and taking care of her, um, that something just felt right. Um, and so I was sitting at home, and he agreed to skip Thanksgiving to hang out with me. And the next day I was sitting there and I was like, oh, our Thanksgiving's ruined. We're not gonna spend Christmas together. Everything's ruined. And I was like, when are we gonna do this gift? Can you tell me about it? And he was like, no. And I was starting to feel a little better. I could finally have solid foods. And he was like, you know what? Let's have sushi for dinner. We do sushi Sundays. We mi we're gonna miss it. Let's do sushi. And I was like, ah, oh, that's chancy because I was ill, but I'm in for it. And so he went out and he picked up the sushi and we had missed an episode of Shark Tank and we do sushi Sundays with Shark Tank on our couch every Sunday that Shark Tank is live. <laughs> and so I was like, sure, we'll catch up. That way we're on pace for this week, all is well. I had the ring of my parents and I made an excuse uh, to go get our dog. 
uh, he needed food and she was obviously still a little sick. Um, and so I went and got dog food and I told my parents I was picking up the ring. And I got back and she was starting to feel better. And he came home and we hung out and we watched Shark Tank. And then all of a sudden he just kind of was like, do you want to spend the rest of your life with me? And I was like, yeah, sure, sounds good. And then he came out with the ring and I was like, Oh, like we met for real. I called our dad when I was driving to go pick up the sushi and to, to let him know. And I came back and I did it. I did it over sushi. I think my favorite thing Adam brings to our relationship is just joy. I get very stressed out. I like to control things. And he just causes me to relax. I'm a person that I, if it takes 12 hours to work, I want to work the whole 12 hours and then I want to do three more to make sure that I'm ahead. And he's like, let's take a break. Let's go for a walk. He just adds excitement. He says, let's go on random adventures. But my favorite thing that Paige brings to the relationship is probably how she pushes me to be a, a, a better person um, and to, to challenge myself to be better for her and, and to be you know, the best that I can be in, in all ways of life with friends, family, in our relationship. Um, you know, and she, she does it in such a supportive way. That love of life is so refreshing now, and he doesn't do it for anyone else. He doesn't post about it. He doesn't do it in a crowd. It's just him all the time. And I think that authenticity and just that absolute joy for everything he encounters just is incredible. It just like lights up the world. <laughs> Adam, I love you so much. You are the best person in the entire world, whether you admit it to yourself or not. You are my best friend, my partner, my support system through highs and lows. And I am so excited to marry you this week. Paige, I love you. I am very excited to marry you and make this promise to each other in front of our family and to start our lives together. And just, just uh, you know, just do the damn thing. <laughs> um, I'm just excited for the rest of our lives and, and to spend every single day with you. I am so honored that you have chosen me as your life partner because I know you deserve the best person in the world. And I'm so happy that you think that's me because I think we're going to have the most incredible life together.